I'm just sharing some information. Um, yeah, did you know that a man set himself on fire and ran around on the White House lawn? When? Uh, just a couple days ago. No, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Was that shielded from the media? No, it was blatantly out there. Okay. Yeah. Do you believe that that happened? Um, it depends on what news source was telling me. So, like, Fox, CNN, what? Could you give me an example? Um, well, if it was National Public Radio, I would probably trust it. Okay, why is that? Um, they are a very credible source when it comes to news. They fact check and all that stuff? Yes, they sure do. So if NPR was to do a story about a 33-year-old man setting himself on fire on the White House lawn and they said it, you would believe it? If Most they covered likely. it? Most, Most likely. likely. Yeah. Even though you didn't fact check it yourself? Exactly. Oh, yes. Why is that? I think that's just what we do. What's that's we? I don't do that. Um, like what, we? I, I guess that's what I On do. the other side of the camera, I guess. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's what I do. Okay, yeah. why is that? I mean, like you're giving yourself over to authority and you're like paying attention to it so yeah. you're treating it like it's gospel like a catholic or a christian would with the yeah. bible and stuff right so is government your god would you say no okay so you pick scripture on what you want to believe coming yeah. from the particular source right yeah you're right so you're in a religion that. pardon you're in a cult basically yeah okay oh, yeah because if you were to say come on a guy set himself on fire. He was able to go on the yeah. White House lawn and do this. Right. No way. He could even get that far, let alone yeah. have it on camera and then be put on TMZ. Right. But if I don't believe it, I'm called a conspiracy theorist. That's right. not fair. Right. I'm just like being critical of my thought and who I give my heart away to. Uh -huh. You know. So I think that, I think that's a problem in our society. What do yeah. you think? I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. We are. 100% controlled by interests that we don't even think <laughs> right. about. Yeah, right. And it is literally, it's pervasive. It's in everything we do. Mm -hmm. It's what we eat, it's how we relate to each other, it's where we go to school, it's everything. Yeah. Literally everything we're controlled by. Basically multinational, multi, you know, billion dollar companies. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the way we live, mm -hmm. you know? And But there are ways to fight against that in the lifestyle that we choose to live. And how are you example. fighting against it? Like, how do you protect your mind? That's an awesome question. I'm glad you're asking me that. Um, it's in the choices I make. So I'm vegan, for example. Oh, okay. Great. And I mean, I mentioned food. I this. actually, um, funny you mentioned that. I know yeah. some friends in Florida. Uh huh. I would love for you to, uh, but continue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just an example of fighting corporate interests with my lifestyle. Okay. I'm not going out there and lobbying or advocating necessarily, but I am deciding what type of food I'm going to feed myself with. And I'm not listening to the government because they're in cahoots with, yeah, government, right. with, you know, corporations about that. That's fucking bullshit. I've been lied to my whole life. Yeah, right. But yeah, now well, I've educated myself and I've backed the, the shit it, right? out of this, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about educating yourself. I think it's important to to get multiple sources and go. to have community around it. Yeah. Because that, I think that keeps me honest. Like it's, thanks for this. Yeah. It keeps me honest. It's like, it allows me to relate to others about this and like kind of check in and keep myself from going off a tangent of like, hmm. I am just doing what everyone else is doing. Right? Why not go on off on a tangent though? Oh, but I am. Okay. But I'm going yeah. off on the tangent with people that are on the tangent with me. Gotcha. So you don't go crazy because yeah. I, you really know, believe how many conversations I have. 99.9% .9 of the conversations I have when people know I'm vegan, mm -hmm. it is not a pleasant conversation. People are highly oh, defensive and very invested in this bullshit that we are taught. Yeah. And I was too. Mm-hmm. And so it can make you go crazy or make like second guess yourself. So I think it's important to have like like minded people around you, mm. but also have like a diverse yes. group of friends. Like having a diverse group of friends is and just like community is absolutely number one. So are you saying it could be dangerous to be in like an echo chamber? That is our problem. Yeah. Right. Yes. 
Um, with that being said, though, can I throw you under the bus? No offense. I'll pay for the injuries. Sure. You believe in climate change and global warming also. Absolutely. Right. Um, you seem really and open-minded. You, I would you, love for you to check out my information. Do you believe in uh, climate change? Um, I was hoping to, that you would ask me that. Okay. Um, do you believe you live here? Yes, I do. You do? Why is that? Because we have science to prove it. Okay, and NPR told you to. Um, no, I went to college. Okay, so yeah. NPR or like various media had nothing to do with your belief in where you live. Well, sure. I mean, that's where the problem we're growing up. But I actually learned about the science from expert in this field mm -hmm. when I went to college. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So if I was to, if you so and I were, people that have spent their entire life. Being an expert in this. So if, I, if yeah. you and I were to go to school and become plumbers and electricians, right. we could learn that trade and then apply it to real life, right? Right. Okay. How do you apply a picture that you've never seen before with your own eyes as belief that you live here? Because again, you're taking authority and appeasing to... You're right. Yeah. Because yeah. other than government, no one with their own eyes has ever seen the earth from this perspective before. Right. So when we have 12 disciples, I mean, astronauts, go to the moon me, like, and come back and say that they've been there. You don't need to be there. so hard because, yeah. like... I'm not being I, hard on you. I'm just no, I know, saying, but like... like, in, like, your approach, you know, yeah. it's, like, you warm Why do you a little have to, bit. But, yeah. like, I get it. Mm -hmm. And I'm with you here. And, yeah, I think we should question fucking everything. Yeah. That's why we're here. Right. You know, we're... It's... The mysteries of our existence are infinite. And the more we question it, the, the more wisdom we have, I think when we acquire knowledge, like we think we, we start to think that we knew, we know things. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, they're a professor, so they know, they know what's going on. It's like, actually, <laughs> we, none of us know. Mm -hmm. And for you to tell me that there isn't climate change or is or whatever is, doesn't matter to me. It like, what I appreciate about you being out here is we need to question shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. And yeah, like, definitely. we're all entitled to our own opinion. And to question is to be wise. Are you entitled to be wrong? Absolutely. Okay. I what if need, there we are? We need to be wrong. What if there are facts that can back up and trump someone's opinion? What does that do for you? Well, that's the whole discourse we're in. Okay. You know, that's that's what this is about. And I'm sure you have facts on your side. I'm not sure if you're going to tell me they're this I would love or whatever. To. Oh, I, but I like, would love. I would love. I to think share that's fantastic. Something. And I could. I can share facts your way too. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know if I really want to do that. Could we get back to the global warming thing? Sure. Do you think it's tell a little? Me where fa... Tell me where you're getting your facts about this, and so you so you don't believe in global warming. Shh. Oh uh, well, can I lay it out for you? Yes. Please. Um, so you can understand. Lay, I'll lay it out like a yeah. carpet here. Okay. So if. Don't you think it's a little narcissistic to think that human beings can affect the weather to the extent that we would actually have to go to another planet because we've destroyed this area? This, you can stop questioning me. Like, can you just give me your yeah. kind of argument? Yeah. So with water behind you, right? Yeah. Water lays level and flat. Uh-huh. Would Is that something we can agree with? Um, another question. Yeah. How about you just tell okay. me what you think? Yeah, so water lays level and flat. Okay. And nowhere ever does it ever gradually bend to create a ball in outer uh -huh. space. So this is a Photoshop. Yeah, it does. If you uh, let water droplets uh, in the International Space Station, they form round bubbles. Okay, and I, the ISS has harnesses, green screens, and augmented reality. And it's also done on a parabolic flight. That's how they're able to make spheres of water and... Okay. Well, in the plane. I've been in an airplane where we did gravity tricks. Mm -hmm. So you go up really yeah. fast. It's a parabolic feel, flight. Right? And then you come down and your arms and legs just float in the air and guess what happens to water? Yeah, it turns into a ball because you're contained in a fuselage. And if you weren't to pull the airplane up, what would happen? No, no, no. I was on the power yes, tower yes, yes. at I was on the power tower yep. at Valley Fair. Mm -hmm. uh, when it, and it started raining really hard when we were at the top. Oh, hey, man. Okay. So I'm out. I'm not, I'm hey, not thanks. in a Have fuselage. A nice day. I'm not in a capsule. Yep. Yeah. You're dropping. No, no. I was at the top. It starts raining so hard mm -hmm. that it hurts. Yeah. So suddenly we get shot down. The raindrops that were so 
they you could watch them like slow down as yep. we're going faster than gravity and then you see them in little globule spheres that doesn't prove uh, gravity, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay, well, this does. Okay, but did you know gravity is a theory and it's never been proven, right? Well, it's, well, okay. well, it's not. It, off space. Have you? No, you know why? Gravity. No, because you can't because the government owns the skies and you believe and you believe them. No, it's not gravity. It's just basic buoyancy density and electromagnetism you just need to have a better understanding of your environment so well that has nothing to do with it i just learned of this three years ago so listen, listen here okay yeah. i appreciate you being out here i really do okay well, and I, it I only gave you warm, warm warmness and kindness and yeah. honestly like mm -hmm. i seriously do appreciate you being out here you are entitled to what you believe well it's not and, a belief because no, water lays oh, level and flat we, man whatever you want to call it it's not calling it whatever you believe you live somewhere you've First never all, seen with no, your own now, eyes now you're contradicting your own thing because oh my okay because so, it's a fact i I want to tell you this. Do you, I, I hope that you will listen. Do you, you think listen, that you thing. live you know, on a on a disc floating in outer space? The thing is about you is that you're you are gonna lose people. I'm not gonna lose anybody. This isn't my first rodeo, ma'am. I've okay. been doing this for quite a while. So have I. You know, I'm a person. You set too. up your own table. I set up my own table every fucking day, dude. And like you go out to public and you talk about and things I'm like this. To talk to you. I appreciate that. And now yeah. you're being aggressive. No, I'm and just saying you're, that you're believing. I don't you, want you to believe in this anymore. Every single time the person talks, anymore. you, you, the way you dealt with her and the way you dealt with me, you're not going to get anything done if you treat people like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank so you. I just want to give you that advice. Well, advice. I appreciate that. But okay. also, you believe you live somewhere you can verify yourself, Goodbye. and I'll, that's a religion. I'll get this for you. So. Yeah, you don't want to litter. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. All right, folks, we're going to take her advice and just keep hitting people in the mouth with flat earth. How you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. I don't know what that means, but... Okay. Are you mocking me? It's not very nice. Are you... Okay, dude. So, that was a good little start to the day. Just hanging out here at Lake Mbaka. I don't know how to pronounce that name. It's Lake Calhoun, downtown Minneapolis. They changed Lake Calhoun's name, I think, like within the last year to something that I don't know how to pronounce. Apologies. So, we just set up shop probably moments before the young lady came up and spoke so I'm not allowed to defend myself I just I just have to sit here and have people talk over me because people don't know how to have a conversation if you're not gonna stop and have a conversation like she at least did then you're gonna continue to walk away then yeah I kind of have to talk over her and then for a vegan lady to feel upset you know well that's her problem not mine um, so what are you going to do? It's absolutely gorgeous out, minus the really weird haze that we have above us. People like just being sprayed, I guess, like insects, and they don't do anything about it. So instead of blue skies, there's literally like this haze up in the sky right now. This is what they call sunny, downtown Minneapolis. If you look at the forecast, it actually says it's sunny right now. So it's kind of gross. <clears throat> you came back. Yeah. Did you feel guilty or did I make you feel guilty? I apologize. No. Hi, Dan. You met a friend. No. Did you talk to him already? No. No. Oh. Nope. So, you got any questions at all? No, I was just trying to see what your setup is for. Have you ever heard of those hashtags before? Uh -huh. Space bubbles. I've never heard of space bubbles. I've never heard of, heard of auto hooks. Auto hooks? Okay, so couple days ago this guy or girl I don't really know um, set themselves on fire on the White House lawn oh yeah I heard about that, that yeah was they're like two days ago or yeah they're 33 years old which is a really weird number but do you believe that that happened like it's a real story like somebody like random person lit themselves on fire and then tried to hang out on the White House lawn I don't have a reason to not believe it I guess okay so auto hoaxing would mean that you hear something or see something on TV and you immediately think it's a hoax okay. and it's not real. 
Because what you're doing is you're giving yourself over to authority and you're assuming that everything that they tell you is true. But you don't fact check, so of course you're going to believe it because you don't investigate on your own time. You would rather bike out at Lake Calhoun, no offense, but you know that's just what people do, right? So if you believe that they lit themselves on fire, then everything else mainstream media says is true, like the Bible is to a Christian. And that's where you get your scriptures and everything. And then when you don't agree with something because Fox News or CNN, you don't agree with one of those two platforms, you're just picking and choosing like Bible scriptures, what you want to believe. Fair enough? Okay. Yeah. So... <laughs> and so, with uh, with that being said, did you know that with, in the ISS that they train astronauts underwater? The International Space Station? Yeah, yeah. So when they do spacewalks, so which is kind of funny if you think about it, this submarines, right? Submarines, they go into a harsh environment, but all their important stuff is on the inside. Why would you create something out in outer space that you have to constantly go out into a harsh environment and fix? Couldn't they have taken some notes from na the Navy and how they build stuff? So they literally have a life-size, quote, life-size ISS in a giant pool, and they fix it. But what they do is when they say they're doing a spacewalk, they're doing drills underwater, and then they present drills as if they're real. And what people have found out is that there are bubbles that float up past the astronauts, because what they're doing is they're CGIing out the people holding them, the astronauts, and they're you're seeing the bubbles of both the astronauts and the scuba divers. And you can watch this okay, yourself. So you're saying that they're not actually in space for these missions. They're uh, they're being portrayed as their space missions, but they're actually just in water. On Correct. And yeah. What what incentive would they have to portray it that way? They're continuing the pro. pro Proofalization of the uh, outer space being real and the ISS being real and astronauts and so what on. What advantage do they have by doing that? Well, obviously it's mind control, right? Because most Americans believe that they live here, right? Well, what decisions are they getting me to make that benefit them based on mind control? Like, what's well, you're trusting government. You're constantly giving yourself over to government over and over and over again and you think you have free will and you really don't because you never question the information that they give you you just take it and eat it up yeah i guess i don't feel like i make any decisions that are that the only thing i care about is really taxes and yeah um, right on that's well, the only thing i feel like i'm enslaved to is taxes sure um, so otherwise i don't know what advantage by them having i don't know what they would get out of me other than funding for space programs that would be to their advantage and not to mine. Yeah, they are to their advantage and they are charging you tax money every year, um, a tune of $55 million a day to give you stories about outer space, black holes, other planets, and so on and so on. Can I ask a question about this? Of course. 1927 and 1997. What is the significance of those two pictures? So bef do you happen to know when we had the rocket technology to go to, quote, outer space? Um, not exactly. About the 50s, late 50s or so, is when, and then they started to really start to, quote, harness that uh, in technology so, in the 60s, right? Yeah. So they were telling you the Earth was a ball in 1927 when they had no way of telling you and knowing for sure. So it's called predictive programming. So they're getting society used to such a topic decades before the actual event happens. And this is typical to do in social structures and to change public opinion over 15 to 20 years is how long it takes. So if they're telling you that you live on a ball in 1927, and then all of a sudden, ta-da, in 1969, they have a cool photograph of the Earth from space. Oh, they had just so happened to match, and our stories are correct, and people just go along with it. Would, would someone have, have been able to fly an airplane high enough to notice whether there's a curvature or not of the Earth in that time period? Well, if, if you were to understand basic maths, you would know that at no height a civilian can get to they will ever see curvature. Not on a shoreline, on an airplane, or even on a high altitude balloon. Even at the Kármán line where, quote, outer space and our atmosphere meet, 62 miles, you still will not see curvature. 
you have to be almost 2,000 miles from the surface of the Earth to see the Earth from your left to right perspective. 2,000 miles. Have you ever been 2,000 miles up? Okay, but astronauts have, right? And the government has. So when the government sends 12 disciples to the moon over a four-year period, they come back with a testimony of grandeur, of super fantastic things that nobody ever here is going to experience, but you believe them because they're the government and you know you won't ever question them. So you pay your taxes, you go along with the game <clears throat> because you have Friday night off and you get to bike around Lake Calhoun, right? So what decisions with this information, what are you doing differently with your life? I treat people incredibly differently. I understand that there's a type of magnetism in the air and an ether type of way for us to understand that when people would say gravity, 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 when it's really just an understanding of magnets, electromagnetism, and electricity that can be harnessed, a probably 1500 feet up in the air and we could have unlimited free energy we could have free energy so when you go home and you charge your phone overnight that would never happen in my particular reality and I would help encourage to change that and we also are being withheld more land and resources so what happens if you if you create the free energy through the magnetism what's preventing you from being able to move forward on that? Even, even an individual basis. I think we know who's holding us back. I mean, look at how long it's taken us to get electric cars for crying out loud. There's videos on YouTube of people showing you how you can run your car on water. Are people doing that? No, because no offense, Americans are lazy. They want the government to do things for them. And the only reason why we have electric cars now is because it's been financed through Tesla with government aid because they're able to control it, tax it, and monetize it. I mean, let's be real here, right? I've been three times at our ninth district Fed Reserve Bank to talk about taxes in 9-11. I didn't see anybody else here doing that. If people complain so much about taxes, why are we potholing and filling up the potholes of our streets? Why don't we have new streets every year? The type of money that they make from our gas tax. I'm here, I'm, I set up a table, y'all can join me whenever you want. I have my information on these cards, but unfortunately people get wrapped into the system and you know, okay. And they just, they only really worry about themselves is what I get generally from the public. Is if it's not affecting me directly, I don't give a rip. Oh, I agree, that's, so, why, yeah. that's why I think it's, it's all virtue signaling and there's no action or uh... <laughs> it's all a transfer to the government, especially in this state. They're all everyone. Most people here are going to want to transfer authority to the government. They believe in big government. They want government to take care of them, and they think it can solve all the problems. Do you think that's the? Do you think that's the biggest addiction over heroin and opium? <laughs> is government assistance? Well, I mean, let's face it. The government said they would do two things originally, right? One is to protect, and one is to provide some transportation. It's pretty daunting if you had to, like, you know, cover yourself for some other country's invasion. I mean, that's, that you wouldn't probably sleep that well, and you probably would focus your whole life on always trying to survive. So your basic perception is we need government to protect us? Yeah. Do you think that you were feared into that thought? Where if we didn't have government, people would probably be doing, be doing literally this right now? If we didn't have police? I am not confident in the humans that are amongst us that we wouldn't try to take over each other. Okay. And if there wasn't some kind of governing body in place, people would be trying to... People are always looking for power. So yeah. you're saying civilians are more diabolical than the 1% of the 1% running the earth right now? Yeah. Wow. Interesting. I mean, that's... I don't at all agree with that. Um, I have, I am optimistic and hopeful because that's the best way to go. How are you doing, what are you doing for yourself to help your inner self and then expressing that to other people? How are you helping other people with your knowledge? Of being... Optimistic. Of just whatever you know. Like, I mean, is there anything that you're passionate about yes. that would cause you to set up a table out in public and be vulnerable? Yeah, I'd like to talk about trying to learn Spanish and acquire people that speak Spanish and I try to teach them some English. Okay. Maybe roll around and do some jujitsu. 
Okay. Pedal on a bike. How has that changed, like, taxes, having to pay taxes? And... I don't mind paying taxes. Okay. I, I'm fine with it. So you're fine with your taxes going to things that you don't agree with? Yeah, because that's the unintended consequence of the better good of the tax system. There's some fallout to it. Okay. There's some... For the most part, I get to drive around on car almost every day when I'm driving to work. I'm like, man, this is nice. Like seriously, like, look, look really? at the billion dollar road systems that we have. It's garbage. Our road system is absolute and utter trash. Do you sometimes maybe think that nope. you have a Which negative? Countries have better road systems. Maybe Monaco. I don't. I don't care about <laughs> other road systems other than where I live. Yeah, but it's a relative so, statement. So if you think our road systems are trash, that means that there's got to be that's other relative countries work. that are better. Yeah, that's because I, when I go to places like Mexico, their roads are trash and shit. Mm -hmm. That, in comparison, we do a lot better than them, and it makes sense because we've got a lot higher wealth base and tax base. But that's cool that you've been to Mexico. Where did you go? Uh, Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Puerto Vallarta, Zihuatanejo. Did you go any to any white, non-white places? Zihuatanejo. Okay, right on. What was that like? Great. Wonderful. How was the environment there? Awesome. Everyone's humble. There's no real, like, I mean, the infrastructure is very primitive. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly dirtier and grimy, everything. I mean, the road systems are shitty. Um, but there's no money and wealth and brand names and uh, clothing to kind of corrupt people. It, it just doesn't seem as competitive and uh, it just seems back to the basics. You know, it's. Yeah. I can relate. I've been to Southeast Asia, so I've experienced um, that culture over there. And I I see that there are people are, I guess, satisfied with having little. Mm -hmm. And it's really quite, I kind of, I wanted that. And when I came back from there, from Southeast Asia four years ago, I actually did come through like a minimalization experience. And I got rid of my TV and I got rid of a lot of stuff. I would probably say almost 90% of my possessions within like, 18 months of me coming back from Thailand. And then I was introduced to the earth being a level, non-rotating plane and how water always lays level and flat. And if we all had an understanding of where we actually came from and not some cartoon by some government that tells us, because I can't verify that. That's not science to believe that we landed on the moon. Science should be verifiable by everybody. And if we have to take uh, an authority word then that's no different than a Christian or a Catholic or a Muslim taking, you know, their stuff. Well, that's the issue. So. I don't, any of this information, it's hard, just like religion, it's, if I don't know what I'm going to do differently. If I have this information, what changes am I going to implement or make? And if I'm not going to do anything about it, it becomes irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So you just, so do you ever, like, what, do you ever investigate new things or new topics or anything like that? Like with an open mind or do you have a bias already? No, I, I'm just relatively indifferent. Okay. I mean, the one thing I'm yeah, passionate about is taxes, and I don't yeah. like having people take more money from me, mm -hmm. you know, but that's that's them pushing their agenda on me, and I'm not, but they can do whatever they want. So why not just stop paying taxes? Well, because you have to be lower, well, so I don't want to go to prison. Oh, so you're saying that if you don't do, you have a choice though, Yeah. right? Well, I have a choice that I can go to a different country <laughs> remove myself from my I source know, of income. But let, let's follow that thought though, okay? Because the government and the police will say, right, you have a choice to not be here. But if you choose not to go and fight your ticket and you stay home, you plead guilty and you have to pay, right? Yeah. So you don't really, do you have a choice? Well, you have a but choice. That's consequences. But yeah, that's psychological. But that's psychological. The consequences are placed upon you by the community that you live in. Right. You know? And so over a period of time, we've allowed ourselves to just become more and more um, Pavlov's dog, where we just kind of like, just say, oh, okay, just take it. You know, I don't even want to fight anymore. Just take it. And like over time, our grandparents and our parents' parents and so on, this is now where we're at. And so you do have a choice not to pay and that's up to you. And the consequences, I guess, will have to be dealt with. But if people did understand what that all meant, um, I would feel more people would be confident not to pay taxes and get things right. Because if I'm paying taxes for NASA and space exploration, when I know outer space isn't real because it doesn't match up with the second law of thermodynamics, 
how can we be spending money on outer space programs? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, do you think that there's some level of taxes that needs to be collected to pay for stuff? Like, do you think there's, I mean, to pay for parks and roads and stuff? Do you think that you should pay some amount of taxes? I would have to cross that bridge when I get to it because they're look at our roads again. But I'm saying like that's not like that costs something more than zero dollars, right? I mean, money's so, money is just a concept and a construct. Okay, it costs it some even amount in, of resources. If you have to make someone take their time out of their day to go put that road in, opposed to doing something else with their time. Right, and what's the benefit to them, right? Right. So what I'm saying is it costs something. Yeah. So if we all loved each other and we all really appreciated each other and we all felt that we seek out to help others in a village, you know, it takes a village to raise a child type of thing. I would, and the three of us, could freely go and fix our roads given the proper resources because we like to do it. Well, okay, let me let me expand on that. How about like electrical lighting and stuff like that? And are you gonna become disciplined in all those disciplines to know how to do all that stuff though? Like. But I just got done telling him earlier that we could have free energy. Free energy doesn't equate to if it knowing equals, all that, though. It equal what? Drilling what? Well, do you have the know-how of building a power system for these? I have a pretty good idea. I mean, there's a lot of information out there showing that we could harness the ether up in the sky and give us free energy. Energy source from the sky, but I'm saying actual wiring and implementing and controlling the sure, system. Sure. Yeah. And I'd love to. Um, look over a person's qualifications as such a thing and see if they're ready to do that. But who owns the power companies? The government does. No, they don't. So could we do that? Yeah, we could. They're, yeah, they do. They're investor owned. So you're telling me that you could freely, like... You could go buy up all the stock for Excel Energy and be the largest stockholder, most likely, and then you kind of almost own that company. I'm saying, you're saying that you can put solar panels and wind generators around your house on a city I block. Didn't say that at all. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Well, so you can still do that. I just don't. No, you can't. I want to get back Not to for very long. The government owns the power companies because they don't. Okay. Well, that's your opinion, I guess. It's I've not just... my opinion. Okay. It's the stock market. Okay. So then. You, are you saying the stock market's fake? That's a whole other topic, my friend. I'm, <laughs> yeah. so I'm just asking you. Is, do you think the, no, it's very real, and it's able to manipulate e economic uh, okay, so do, things do you right think now. People actually own things. Like, do you think I own this bike? Uh, I think you have a better chance of owning that bike than a piece of property. Yeah. Okay. So you do agree that people own shares of stock in companies. Uh, I, I'll agree with that just to kind of belabor the point, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, so yeah. then ultimately the government doesn't own power companies because individual stock owners own shares in power companies. And then there's there's actually three types of, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I so you're saying like, you're different. saying like government entities don't subcontract other entities to buy up stock for companies that have energy? Well, that's, that could happen. Have you ever looked into HSBS? No. H what is it? China's H HCMC, whatever. Hennepin County Medical Center. <laughs> right. No, it's um, China's bank. HC something. Anyways. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. So they had a a problem a while back where they were caught quote embezzling money and laundering money because they allowed people to come in and just deposit money like millions of dollars cash all at once and they didn't fact check. So there was a quote conspiracy that they were allowing drug dealers from out of country to come in and launder their money into this bank on United States um, property. And there was just this big hubbub. <coughs> so this bank knows what it's doing on the United States property. And all of these other people know that this particular bank launders and money. And so they just use this as a recycling idea. So, I mean, it's to say that the government doesn't own electricity and so on or companies like that i, I see where you're coming from regulating it they just yeah, they, yeah. They, they're, they're the ultimate it, authority in regulating and making changes that are wrong but they don't necessarily own it but i mean they, ultimately it is a large powerful force but what if but wouldn't it make more sense just to have free energy and just give it away for free why do we have to charge people yeah, for it great. line yeah. it up comes down to a safety thing because you say people are just going to freely work on it 
Um, there's just there's no barriers to entry to be someone that works on this, and it's going to have like what high voltage, large amounts of current. How do you know that? Have you looked into this topic before? I know a little bit about electricity. Okay, I'm not talking about electricity. Um, I'm talking about the electricity that you get up in the air and diamagnetism and electro and magnetism and then, I, then you got me beat. And different things like liquid metal and whatnot, like mercury? mercury and stuff. Not just mercury, but you know, there's some other ideas, you know, that go along with that. Well, but it starts with someone doing it on a very small micro uh, yeah. basis and doing it for themselves and then spreading it everyone else and then you go on shark tank and then the companies buy it up and then you're just left with a hundred thousand dollars and then they can put it on a shelf for 20 years right don't sell the shark tank keep going well i'm just saying but that's where that's if you get big enough is it fair to say that somebody's gonna try to come out and buy you out uh it's possible yeah okay Money is what drives everything. The name of the game is just trying to have more money than everyone else. Yeah, right. That's how you, uh, which is the strive for power, which is what people intrinsically want, is power over others. It's kind of human nature. I don't know how to stop that. It really drives things. Would you pay for knowledge? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah? What if this knowledge here that I'm giving you is free and it could help you just understand your reality a little bit better? Perception is reality. Mm hmm I just want more freedom and wealth and uh, time. Yeah, right. I don't. I don't necessarily need to have a firm reality. I just want to be uh, in control of my own uh, surroundings as best I can. Yeah, fair enough. So you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all have our different paths, you know, and I clearly on a different one than most. And I'm just here to share information, and then if it helps people, it does. And if it doesn't, then hey, you know. I'm so outside you, too. You said a couple years ago someone introduced you to the, the yeah. concept. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Just never crossed my mind that the images that we get from NASA, NASA.gov, yeah. okay, what's are paintings. The, what's the difference between the left and the right? Is there some significance? There is, yeah. Um, one year they made America big, and then another year they made America small. Right. And the diameter of both of these circles is the same but they literally can change the size of the continent because you're never going to question it. And you're just going to believe it because it came from .gov. But every two or three years, they come out with, have come out with a different image of Earth from space, and it seems to be different. Copy and pasted clouds and so on. So if people want to believe in a fantasy, that I mean, how does that help the rest of your life if the, it's I, built I on sand? Like this is like the smallest piece of the whole thing that you're sharing today and I just don't see how that affects anybody yeah sure well I mean your whole life you believe you live on a ball right yeah but again I guess it comes down to what are you gonna do with that information which how is the path of your life gonna be different based on ball or I won't know until my life's over right yeah, I mean yeah um it, could I ask you a serious question though sure. maybe it relates to this if an alien invasion were to happen sometime next month or sometime in the next year or so would you believe it? If with, you, if, if with your own eyes you saw what you thought were more advanced technology than what you have seen, even far beyond what Hollywood would portray, and you saw them hovering over Minneapolis, these alleged ships, would you believe that those are aliens from another planet? Yeah, and you hope that other people see it too, otherwise they'll think you're nuts. Yeah, so what if they're not aliens from another planet and it's just electromagnetized vehicles that they just have an understanding they're holograms that you can touch which is real technology right now and it just looks incredibly high definition and they're able to manipulate the environment to make it appear like it's something that it's not like um david copperfield type stuff That'd so be really cool yeah and they really can do that now it's called project bluebeam okay. yeah like I can do a Google search on it? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, type in holograms that you can touch. Okay. It goes into a lot of the virtual reality and 8K stuff. Deep fakes are another thing too, where you'll, wa you'll watch TV and with the new 8K technology that's coming out, they're able to simulate a person's face on TV and I can speak, but they will be projected out on the television as their voice and their face. It's called a deep fake. 
And it's the idea is that, that at least over 50% of the stuff that you see on TV, all of it is CGI. Deep fake, huh? Yeah, type in deep fakes, man. It's really fun. There's a movie out there from 1981 called Looker. It has a lot to do with that, too. How all, all the people like your Walter Cronkites and your uh, Anderson Coopers are CIA agents put in place to control the narrative that's coming out. What was the Project, Project Bluebeam? Blue Beam. Yeah. ODD has a really good thing. ODD, Project Bluebeam. So, I mean, so with that being said, I guess I could maybe sway you into thinking that if an alleged alien invasion does happen, what if it's just so a, 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 a new religion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, so what if it's just another civilization on another continent that you've never been told about? And it's just them with that type of technology. And then they come over to our plane of existence like this, this right here. And they're just out here, out in this area. But then they just come into our area and then it's proliferized by the government as aliens from outer space. Just, you know, a heads up, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe it because there's a ceiling above us and possibly water above us. I don't know. I've never been up there. So from what you know and been educated on, it's not been decided yet or figured out what the cover is? Or? Uh, I mean, they call it a firmament. Some people call it a dome. Okay. Uh, it's never been proven in my eyes that this dome curves or we're in some kind of a snow globe, but we are 100% in a contained environment. That's why we have pressure. It's like, what, 14.8 PSI? So we live in a pressurized contained system. We cannot get out. There is no outer space. It's just us, our creator, and the enemy. And that's it. <laughs> so, you know, do with that what you want. And the idea is that, you know, demons and angels and stuff are, they're pro prolifera, they're, they're projected as aliens from outer space when really they're just, a, it's just a spiritual plane. Different vibration, frequency, and light beings, you know. So the lights that you see in the sky as like stars, right? They could just be vibrations of light in a liquid environment. And so they're liquid and they're, their lights in the sky, but when they come into our reality where we can breathe, they take on physical form. And that particular vibration and that light that they have comes out as a projection of what we see as human beings and with our eyes. So you look like you do because your thoughts make you who you are. I am you, you are me. So, you know, I'm here because everybody needs me to be here, whether they agree with me or not, or whether they notice me or not. These people and you want me here to do what I'm doing right now. I am you, you are me. So we're all just projections of each other. Cool. Really what it's all about. So. Appreciate your yeah, thanks for stopping by, fellas. I really hope you guys have a good bike. Yeah, and I wasn't mocking you. I just no, I saw the Flat Earth movie and the guy would always take a picture. Yeah, of that. I know. That's, that's why I did that. No, you're good, man. I'm just, I give people a hard time because they give me a hard time. I, you know, and see, so. that's the thing. <laughs> I tell you what. You and I will be more successful if you just kind of like chill out a little bit more. Yeah. Because really the aggression and the, the angst, it just gets the other person that way more. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it gets people not thinking as clearly. Yeah. And, and good discussions are good. Even if you disagree with someone, mm -hmm. you either firm up yours more. You're right. Or you start to go, oh, maybe I'm not right on this. And maybe you go, oh, maybe that is right. So it's just important to be able to get just good at discussing. Things. Yeah, no, I appreciate you stopping by. Too uh, easily focus on being offended or uh, right. People offended. get too focused on winning. They yeah, right. Married, married to a thought, and I have to win. This is my thought, and it has yeah. to win. No, I feel you. I totally get that. I've I've actually the last time I was out a couple of weeks ago, I was here at the lake, and I had just in the five hours that I was out, I had probably three or four people where I just felt like I had to ask them, and I don't ask people this very much you think you're better than me. And they said, yeah, I do. And just because I don't go along with the common narrative that is given to us by our education and news media. I, I'm an engineer, so, <laughs> so. I'm, I'm a big fan of digging into things, and yeah. tinkering mm -hmm. and figuring things out. I dig into a lot of software, Python programming and stuff, and I like it. And yeah. I, I think I encourage it. And you're obviously tinkering with science here, mm -hmm. trying to figure things out, so. What do you think of No Man's Sky? Uh, you know about fractals and whatnot? No, 
I don't. Okay. I just, you mentioned computer stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess I don't know much about it then. I'm oh, still scratching it's the so surface. fascinating. Um, fractals and no man's sky idea will be used because what fractals do <clears throat> is they take a, a basic uh, equation and then it just multiplies itself and it's like being a human being where you're a conscious observer and nothing exists until a human being perceives it just like the idea of if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's around to hear it does it make a sound and no it doesn't make a sound because there's not a conscious observer to hear it Okay, and so, was, said there was, no was man's that, sky. What was the other one you said? Um, gosh, just fractals. Fractals, fractals or Mandelbrot. Mandelbrot. B-R-O-T, yeah, Mandelbrot. That's another thing too. And fractals, what it does in no man's sky is it's constantly generating the environment in front of you based on uh, the equation of, quote, the circle of life or flower. Fractals. Yeah, fractals. Fractals in nature, fractals in art. A curve or geometric figure, each part of which has the same statistical character as a whole. Yep, so the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, Fibonacci yep. sequence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's similar to that. Did you go to school for uh, <clears throat> this type of stuff? High school, man. Okay. I'm just 38 years in the game. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right on, man. Yeah, so No Man's Sky is really a fascinating program. It's only like 15 gigs, but they say to explore. It's based on outer space, too, so it's really difficult for me to get into it. But okay. No Man's Sky, it's only 15 gigs, but they said it would take over 500 billion years for you to explore the entire No Man's Sky universe. Cool, man. You gave me a lot to read yeah. up on. So. Yeah, I hope so, man. Enjoy. I just take screenshots of the Wikipedia page or something, <laughs> and I look through my photos later and then cool man i yeah, hope you uh yeah. have fun exploring for sure man yeah cheers Take care, man. Right, thanks fellas day. yeah you yeah. too bye, bye.